Hi, my name is Barb Eichinger from Future Plus Systems, and welcome back to our lab. Today we're going to talk about the DDR3 Detective, a revolutionary new product that allows engineers to look for hundreds of protocol violations on the DDR3 bus simultaneously. Here's the setup screen for the DDR3 Detective. I'll go along the top. We have the Run button, Setup, Mode Registers, Violations, Performance, Log File, State Listing, Eye Detector, and Setup Wizard. Under File, we also have the ability to save a configuration, load a configuration, and restore the JEDEC values in case you've set your own values in lieu of the default JEDEC values. Here's where all the protocol violations are listed. You can select them all simultaneously and see the corresponding JEDEC parameters to the right, or select only a few in case you're looking for just one or two violations and you want to narrow it down. If you were to select only one violation, you would see its corresponding parameters occur to the right. These parameters can be changed, as shown for the range of values in the parentheses on the right. The DDR3 Detective has a setup wizard to help you quickly get started with this tool. Using the pull-down menus, you can tell the DDR3 Detective the information it needs to know about your target. For our target, we have an 1867 DIM, 2-rank, two 2-gig two capacity. The DDR3 Detective also has an automatic way of detecting the mode register settings. Simply power cycle the target, wait for the DDR3 Detective MR light to be lit, then hit the OK button. Now let's take a look at those mode register settings. All four mode registers are captured and can be seen here. Next we have eye detector. Eye Detector is part of the setup process. It allows the DDR3 Detective hardware to center its sampling point so that it can accurately acquire address command control information on the DDR3 bus. When Eye Detector is done, you can review the results. As you can see on this system, running at 1867, the DDR3 Detective will have no trouble acquiring the necessary signals. Now that we have the DDR3 Detective set up, let's return to the Setup screen and select All to see if we have any violations. Yep, we sure do. Violation 16 and Violation 29. Those violations are occurring on both Rank 0 and Rank 1. With the DDR3 Detective, you can tell which rank the violation is occurring on. Let's take a look at these violations one at a time. So let's return to the setup screen and just select violation 16. We can use our internal memory inside the DDR3 detective to take a look at the address command control information surrounding the error. We have powerful filtering and store qualification in the DDR3 detective so that you can just capture the cycles of interest. Let's see what we've captured. There it is, violation 16. What the DDR3 detective is looking for is a write followed by a read too close together to the same rank. Let's take a measurement. 18 nanoseconds. That's a violation. Let's take a look at the data using our Agilent Logic Analyzer. Using the Logic Analyzer, we can not only capture the address command control, but we can also capture the data. The DDR3 Detective can only capture the address command and control. Using both of these tools together, you can get a very accurate picture of the traffic surrounding the error. Again, on the Logic Analyzer, we can use the markers to verify the violation. Remember, on the Logic Analyzer, 
we can actually see the data that's being transmitted by the write and then by the read. For violation 29, we'll follow the same process. Return to the setup screen, select violation 29, go to our state listing, and then hit the Run button. The DDR3 detective quickly acquires the error. You can see it here, a calibration command followed too closely by an activate to the same rank. Let's see what it looks like on our Agilent Logic Analyzer. Yep, there it is. The activate and the calibration command too close together and all the surrounding traffic. The DDR3 detective also has real-time performance counters. These counters can count command bus utilization, power management metrics, and data bus utilization. These counters are key in that they do not just count the events that have been acquired in the acquisition memory, but count the events as they're really happening. This allows you to run different types of software, putting different loads on the DDR3 bus, and see the results immediately. These types of counters are very important for helping you squeeze every bit of performance out of your design that you possibly can. The DDR3 detective also has a log file. The log file gives the date, the time of day, the violation number, and the number of times the violation has occurred during that time interval. The log file allows the DDR3 detective to run for days, even weeks, recording any violation that occurs. This allows the design engineer to run several different tests over long periods of time to ensure robust validation. Thanks for joining me. If you would like to learn more about the DDR3 Detective or other DDR3 validation tools, check out our website at www.futureplus.com. And we'll see you next time in the lab.